everybody. Welcome to Facts at Five. I'm Michael Clark. It is Thursday, June the 4th, 2020. And I am here at the uh, the lovely LTV Media Center in Waynescott, New York, with my equally lovely co-host, Morgan Barnes. Say hello, Morgan. Hello, Morgan. So we have some numbers today. Yes, or we have. Reasonable facsimile thereof. Yes. Okay. Well, actually, if you go to the SuffolkCountyNY.gov website, they now have backup the local statistics. Okay, good. Um, it and didn't it, seem like it had been updated, though. I've right. got a, I've got a. It was still some numbers that I remember. Right. So it doesn't matter anyway. Whatever. But anybody can go to that website. But what we do know is that, and this I, I do believe from John Hopkins, is that um, the number in Suffolk County for people who have passed away from COVID nineteen is as uh, nineteen is a uh, one thousand nine hundred fifteen, and as of Today, more than um, 100,007 people have died from coronavirus in the United, the novel coronavirus in the United States. One week ago, on Wednesday, May 27th, we were talking about the 100,000th person milestone. Right, and that's that's a great point, Morgan, because now, I mean, so we were we're still so we were still at a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars, a thousand people a day. Right. If you you know n- probably. Still on that same Different. track. Yep. Still on the same track. It's still very, very serious. We're still in the middle of a, a pandemic. Yep. Um, so that is the latest from the COVID center. All right. And um, from the East Hampton Star, Jamie, Jamie Buffalino has uh, there's some news about the East End restaurants. This is pretty big because they were supposed to be in phase three, if you remember. So right. now they're bumping them up to phase two and allowing them to open, um, uh, you know, soon. But the East End restaurants will be able to reopen for outdoor dining by next week, according to new guidelines announced by Governor Cuomo yesterday. That decision will likely come as welcome news to Assemblyman Fred Thiel, who said on Tuesday that he has been lobbying the governor on behalf of local officials to accelerate the reopening process to prevent the economic shutdown from further dampening the most lucrative season for East End businesses. Um, Suffolk County uh, Executive Steve Ballone said that Department of Health Services, which enforces sanitary code, um, would give automatic approval to restaurants that have been granted permission to expand outdoor dining. He reiterated that commitment yesterday afternoon. However, they, you know, the, the restaurants still have to um, deal with what the local municipalities Right. Are saying, right? So Barbara Borsak, the East Hampton Village deputy mayor um, and candidate for mayor in the upcoming election, said in an email to supporters on Monday that the village will be relaxing some of the local codes in order to allow businesses to temporary uh, to allow businesses temporary signage, outdoor display, outside seating for the season to help them get back on their feet during this unusual and unprecedented period. Opens up a lot of questions. Um, I don't think we have the answers for them yet. You know, um, we, you were just talking about it before. We, you know, what about a place like Sam's? Right. You know, right in the village, right? Right. There's no place for them to have right. outdoor dining. So obviously, I think Governor Cuomo had said that the, they still have to follow the um, the six foot guidelines in terms of laying out the tables. Uh, the servers need to be wearing masks. Uh, the things that we you know fully expected, but there you know there's going to be a lot of restaurants that still aren't able to. Right. Obviously provide outdoor dining. So, um, you know, we'll stay on top of that. Um, but, you know, it, it, I think a lot of this has to do with obvious, obviously the um, the budgets uh, for the, the states and, and the counties um, and also for, you know, keeping small businesses being able to operate. Right. So. I know. It's really it's really important. It should be interesting. And people like eating outside. You know, in general, there are a lot of problems that go with it. Flies. Flies. <laughs> <laughs> Rain, wind, all of the other things. But I think it would be necessary and it would be nice. And I'm glad that the um, the local municipalities are, are tr- figuring out how to make it work for people. Yeah, and, and, and tacked onto that, you know, he uh, Fred Thiel expanded on the fact that, um, that, that right now the state budget is in peril. There's a $13 billion budget gap. And he says, we're all looking to Washington. We need more federal assistance. And the the Congress uh, negotiations for another federal relief bill will take place this month. And that's in for a bumpy ride, I have to say. Right. 
Um, you know, they they don't seem to come together on that. If the federal government doesn't provide assistance, Mr. Thiel said, it would force the state to cut subsidies to municipalities, school districts, and that, he said, would be counterproductive to boosting the economy. Right. So it all ties together. And um, see what happens. Yeah. Um, okay, so again with food, this time from Carissa Katz at the Star. With food distribution channels disrupted, supermarket shopping fraught with anxiety, and grocery delivers, delivery slots hard to come by, the reopening of farmers' markets here may be more anticipated and more celebrated this year than ever before. And I can speak to that personally. I'm looking forward to the farmers' market. Yeah. I think that the grocery stores have been doing an admirable an admirable job considering. Mm -hmm. However, it is not fun in the grocery stores. Yeah. <laughs> you, I think it's just the mask thing. You yeah. can't smile at people. You can't let them know what's going on. The one-way thing isn't working. And, you know, yeah. what are you going to do? What am I going to yell at somebody who's going the wrong way down? You know, no. It, Crazy it, driver. Great, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Uh, yeah, and I, I don't want, you know, because... It just is, you know, and I think they're doing a great job, the grocery stores. Well, that happened to me the other night. I, yeah, I went in there to get some from my wife, and I, I, you know, I went down the aisle, and then I, I followed the, the arrow which way I had to go. So I'm going down, about halfway down, got all the stuff in the bag, and she wanted three pounds of something. Um, right? yeah. She's making jams or whatever. Right. And uh, so I'm like looking look to where, so now i got to go back over there. Right. Would, I don't want to walk in the wrong direction. You know, like, <laughs> do I need to walk all right. the yeah. aisle? To you come? do. Do I? I? I think so. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. But that's what I mean. Fraught yeah. with anxiety. That's what Cursa wrote. Right. Fraught with anxiety. That's what I feel. Well, hopefully I, the, uh, the, the farmer's markets will. Right. Yes. Right, right, right. And so um, the Sag Harbor Market opened Memorial Day weekend. The Springs Market opened on Saturday. And that's at Ashwa Hall. And um, but what the change is going to be is the town board has said that um, the East Hampton Farmer's Market can happen, when was this? Is this this weekend or the following weekend? Uh, this oh, weekend, yeah. This weekend. So East Hampton Market will be open weekly on Fridays from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. rain or shine, but it has changed locations. It is not in the Nick and Tony's parking lot. It is at the Baptist Church parking lot. Oh, okay. Um, so that is an important change to note. It is the East Hampton Farmer's Market, which will move from the parking lot of Nick and Tony's to the grounds of the Calvary Baptist Church, which is at the corner of Spinner Lane and Springs Fireplace Road. Yeah, it's a better location, actually. It's tough getting on to It is uh, tough, and it's Cedar and it's Street. always yeah. so crowded over there in that in that Cedar Street, yep. you know, North Main Street area. Um, so I think that's, that's good. And, you know, there's going to be... One-way foot traffic, separate entrance and exit, ten feet between vendors, and really, um, and they and they said that they were they were loath to leave their dear friends at Nick and Tony's, but the epidemic made it imperative the, for them to do so. Really, it is. Um, people have been really nice about helping people understand if they're new, which right. way to go, and everything, and what to yeah. do. Um, so that's you know. Paul Hamilton, who's a friend of mine, he runs the uh, the Springs Farmers Market, mm -hmm. you know, which I love because they had music there, which they are not allowing right. now. Um, but yeah. he said that everybody was pretty, uh, you know, they they kind of followed the guidelines. Right. You know, he said, I I guess because people are used to doing it for the last two months, they they kind of right. everything just fell into place. There was no problems with it. I think they're only letting a certain amount of people at a time, so it's fenced off, and you can only go in one way. Right. Um, so. But uh, get, getting the, the you know, fresh grown stuff and right. things like that is going to be great. Okay, so now Swedish regrets. Yes. What happened, Michael? I don't How know. How did things go wrong? The, you know, they, they, um, the Swedish epidemiologists who have uh, seen the country's, la uh, what is said, the country's laser fair response to coronavirus said yesterday that it should have taken more aggressive steps, right? Remember, they're going under the the whole uh, herd immunity type of thing and hoping that was going to work out. And it didn't. It didn't. It didn't. It did not. Um, and, you know, just encouraging them to, to use normal behavior. A lot of people were behind that. I remember there was a, a furor in this country. Oh, that, sure. You know, Look at Sweden. That? They're yeah. going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. No, no, no. Right. <laughs> Don't do the Swedish chef. Right. It wasn't The Swedish him. chef did the not Swedish, do it. <laughs> he's not even Right. The, <laughs> but the, uh, it, it turns out that, that Sweden has suffered the highest per capita death rate um, in the week that ended Tuesday, although some other countries still have higher overall death rates, um, you know, per capita and um, 
So I guess they're, they're really looking at that whole thing. But what, this is the world's highest per capita death rate, and the thing to note is that its neighbors, Finland and Norway, have among the lowest. Yes. So that's the important part is that Sweden decided to go this route. And, you know, um, I, in, in a way, scientifically, it's maybe good to have this data, but it's very unfortunate if you're a Swedish person. It is. It is. Good try, however, it did yeah. not work. Yes. Um, What's okay. happening with the primary? Okay, so the primary is right? coming up. The, the 23rd is the New York State primary. These are state and federal primary elections. The early voting period for state and federal June 23rd primary will be June 13th through June 21st. Um, the New York State's, the New York's, excuse me, New York's first congressional district is going to determine which Democratic primary candidate will run in the general dis, the district's general election on November 3rd. Good night. Um, of course, these four primary um, Democrats are going uh, heading into um, the election against incumbent Lee Zeldin who was first elected in 2014. And the four Democratic primary candidates for the first congressional district are Greg Fisher, Bridget Fleming, Perry Gershon, and Nancy Jeroff. Right. Is that Jeroff or Jeroff? Do you uh, know? I do not know exactly okay. what the right way is. She's, um, a, she's the scientist. The right? scientist. Yeah. Um, so that is – so just keep – aware of what's going on because yeah. you can and make sure that you if you can't make it to the polls that you can you know do the early voting whatever you can do also um yesterday i got my ballot for the school board i did not get mine yet well okay so look for it um i got mine yesterday and i sent it out today okay so that is that is um done for me it was pretty easy one sheet there's like three envelopes you have to deal with but you can read what you're supposed to do okay not a big deal um, one thing that we have done is that we have, for all the stuff that we talk about every day, we always mention websites and phone numbers and blah, blah, blah. And what I was doing initially was adding it to the slates yes, you were. at the end, mm -hmm. which was time consuming or whatever. But also it didn't allow people to access it. Mm -hmm. So what we've done now is if you go to our website on the homepage right under the Facts at Five, you, you can click on a box and go to the show that you're listening to, and we have a whole page of everything we t of what we talked about, and the sources and the resources. Okay. So it, um, it's all right there for you. That way you can get your pen and write it down. You can click you, on you it. You can click on it. Yeah. Click on it and go to the website. Yeah. It's that simple. I'm old fashioned that way. <laughs> so you're gonna write it down write it and down, then go type it in the website and then go. I'm old. Yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, but you can click on it if you want to, if you're so inclined. And then the other thing that we're going to do as of today is we're adding Facts at 5 to SoundCloud, which will – you can listen to SoundCloud at 5 o'clock. Right. Um, and that will – that just like watching LTV except for you're just hearing us instead of seeing our lovely faces. You don't have to see me going like this with papers. You don't have to see, you don't have to see the whole thing, <laughs> the blazer that I've been wearing for three months, the everything. <laughs> okay. You don't have to see any of that stuff. But – so you can listen to it and you – and the link is soundcloud.com. Slash local TVEH. That's great. That's a continuous improvement. That's what we seek. Um, but uh, just a reminder: Janu uh, January, January, June. You just, 6th. You just you, you're wishing. You're either wanting to go back or go forward. I know. June sixth and seventh, <laughs> Saturday and Sunday, we'll have the Feed the Need uh, Best Jams. Uh, showing on LTV Channel 20. We'll be streaming that live, we hope. And Randy Brecker, Loudon Wainwright III, Judy Carmichael, uh, uh, a bunch of local dig uh, dignitaries, I guess. Um, it's luminaries. Be, luminaries, yeah, whatever. Local luminaries. Yeah, it's going to be a great show. So tune into that. Um, and um, once again, thank you to our sponsor for Facts 5, Sound Aircraft Services. Don't forget to like us. Wherever. On Facebook. Anywhere. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Can you like on SoundCloud? I don't, I don't know. know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, do that. And, do we have uh, an interview? We do not. There is no interview today. Okay. And um, Tomorrow is Peter Van Squick. Yes. Tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow is Friday. All right. Just checking. As opposed to what you initially said. Right. And we had Merry Christmas, by the way, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been a long pandemic, folks. Sorry. Have yourself a wonderful evening, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. Bye.